In this lecture presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to start learning how to analyze functions by in this lecture covering the first derivative test. Now I've drawn here a rough sketch of a parabola. Not drawn to scale, of course, so you know, I don't want to hear any complaints about that. But we so we have the equation for this parabola is f of x is equal to x squared. My question to you is if we found the derivative for any point greater than x equals 0, what would the value of the derivative be? Well, we can find the derivative to answer this question, because we know it's already 2x. And because you're reasonably smart people, you know that if x is positive, then your first derivative must be positive well for this example. But what does it tell you if the first derivative is positive? Positive is the, uh, the derivative. The value of the derivative is the value of the slope of the line that's tangent to any single point. So if you picked a point here on your parabola and you picked it, it would have a slope of maybe like positive 3. And you know that lines with a positive slope are increasing. You know, they're always, well, they always have positive slope. They're always going up. The further you go, the further positive you go in x, the further positive you go in y. In the same situation, if you took on the other side of the graph and you put in a negative x, you would get a negative slope out. So this function is decreasing. As you go to more positive x, your y becomes smaller and smaller. So I've used some uh, terms here, but I haven't defined them increasing is exactly what you think it is. The further or the more positive x becomes the more positive f of x becomes. And decreasing is the same thing, only it's the more negative f of x becomes. So this concept, what I've covered here so far, is going to lead us into something known as the first derivative test. The first derivative test is an incredibly handy thing because we can literally take any equation at all and determine whether it's increasing or decreasing on a particular interval. So let's start with the equation we already know and it's our parabola. f of x equals x squared. f prime of x is going to equal 2x. So now if we pick a number here so let's say we do f prime of positive 6, we get out positive 12, and we know that the graph is increasing at x equals 6. And if we put, say, f prime of negative 2 in, we get out negative 4, and it's decreasing at x equals negative 2. So it's some useful information, but can we determine something more global about this? Can we determine on what ranges f of x is increasing and what ranges f of x is decreasing? And the answer is that you can. What you do is you take your second derivative and you set it equal to 0, and then you solve for x, which in this case is x equals 0. And at every point that x, or at every single point the first derivative is equal to 0, you get what is known as a critical point. Everywhere f prime of x equals 0 is a critical point. Now you already know, well I suppose we haven't, alright let's cover this explicitly. When your first derivative is equal to 0, when f prime of x is equal to 0, 
that means that you have a perfectly straight line. It has absolutely no slope to it. It's perfectly horizontal. Because if f prime of x is equal to 1, it would look like this. Negative 1 would be like this. If the slope is 0, then it has to be a straight line. The only way you can get this is if, okay, so this is f prime of x. Only This only occurs where you have a minimum where you have a maximum in the function. That's the only place where you can get a horizontal line. So when we set our first derivative equal to zero and we solve for x's, we found everywhere we have a minimum or a maximum, or where we have a horizontal part of the graph. I suppose I should be fair because you can have this too. That's known as an inflection point. We'll cover that later. But wherever we have critical points, we have the opportunity for our graph to change from increasing to decreasing. So what we do next is we take our critical points and we set up a table. And the first value will go from negative infinity to your first critical point, and then if from 0 to positive infinity. And if you have, say, two critical points, let's say if you had 0 and you had 1, you would have one range that goes from 0 to 1, and then you would go from 1 to infinity. But in this case, we only have the one critical point. So we go from negative infinity to the first critical point, and from that critical point to positive infinity. So these are the ranges. Uh, we can have either increasing or decreasing on these ranges. And the way we tell is we take a test value. So it has to be a value inside the range. It can't be on the edge. We couldn't use 0 as a test value. And what we'll do is we'll plug these test values into our first derivative to find if we have a negative or a positive number. If the number is negative, so this is test value, this is the result. If the number is negative, that means we are decreasing. We have a negative slope. The function is going down. And if the value is positive, that means that you're increasing on that particular range. So look at the results we got here. We took our derivative and we found that from negative infinity all the way to 0, our parabola was decreasing. And from 0 all the way to positive infinity, it was in increasing, which these are exactly the results that we were expecting because we're familiar with this graph. Now there's one other thing that we can determine from the first derivative text test is if we have a minimum or a maximum. And take a look at this. For our parabola here, we're decreasing until we get to zero, and then we start increasing afterwards. That must mean we have a minimum here. And for the same reason, if you're increasing on an interval and then you start decreasing on the next interval, you would have a maximum. So critical points are wherever the first derivative is equal to zero. You set up a table and you test on that particular range whether your graph is increasing or decreasing. And if it switches from increasing to decreasing, you either have a minimum or a maximum. Or if it switches from increasing to decreasing, you have a maximum. If it switches from decreasing to increasing, you have a minimum. So that's our first derivative test. We're going to do plenty of problems on this to hammer it home. And then after this, we're going to do our second derivative test, which tests for concavity.